Hey everybody, I had a friend give me a call last night with a very unique request. This is something I haven't made before. Um, our hairstylists and barbers are going back to work here in Virginia tomorrow um, and one of the stipulations is their capes have to either be single use or be able to be disinfected. So he called me up yesterday and said, can you make me capes out of shower curtains? And I said, yes, I'm sure I can. Uh, we're winging it today. This is the first time I've done this, um, but I think it's going to be pretty easy. And for the closure on the back, which would normally be snaps, I've decided to use um, Velcro because um, I'm sure you can spray this with disinfectant and it'll be all right. And I'm worried that the snaps, if they're yanking on them, they're going to tear through the shower curtain material. So anyways, this should be all you need. Um, and I would definitely recommend getting the sticky Velcro just because it's way easier to work with. You can peel it, stick it down, and run your stitch through it without having to pin or worry about it shifting or anything like that. Okay, so I've taken my shower curtain and folded it in half. And I've taken my smock that was given to me by my friend to use as a pattern and I've folded it in half. I've got them lined up with the folds on the same side. Um, so the reason you would do this is so when we make the cut and we open it up, the cape comes out perfectly symmetrical. Um, now this cape has these nice rounded corners which has a really, you know, aesthetically pleasing look normally, but because I'm working with plastic and it's kind of a pain in the butt to, to turn the corner when it's curved like that, um, I'm going to go ahead and just cut these corners off in a square shape and, you know, we'll fold them in like you're wrapping a Christmas present and that should make the seams much neater and tidier and cleaner looking because, you know, in the end we do want this to look as professional as possible since it's going to be used um, on a daily basis in their shop for the time being. So I've got my rotary cutter. You could trace this with Sharpie and then sit down and do it with your scissors if you want. Um, but you know me, I like to do everything fast. So this is quick and easy. Now you need to make sure that you pull your um, your cape all the way to the top of the of the um, shower curtain because um, the shower curtain is the exact perfect size for the length of this cape. So if I started too low, I would not um, have enough room on the end for the full length of the cape. Mm -hmm. I'm just going real slow, trying to be careful not to cut any holes in my buddy's um, cape. <laughs> using my ruler because I do want to get a nice straight cut if possible. That's just going to make it really easy to fold the seams over. I'm not going to be obviously ironing this into place like I normally would if I was folding seams. Um, and I'm not going to be pinning it. You could pin it if you wanted to, but I prefer not to just because I want to punch as few holes as possible into this plastic. We don't want to take any chance with it ripping or tearing. Also make sure not to drop your rotary cutter on your foot. <laughs> you might lose a toe. Okay, that was ridiculously easy. 
Uh, I just realized there was a drop of milk on the table left over from the kids having lunch, so it's a good thing this is wipeable. Now that it's clean, I'm gonna take it over to my machine and I'm gonna do about a half inch um, hem around the edges, so this should be interesting. I just want to mention one thing. Um, if you don't have the time or just don't feel like it and you want to make these quick and easy, you can leave the raw edges. You don't have this is not going to fray, you know, or tear or anything. You know, I'm just finishing the edges um, so that they look nice and professional and hopefully not exactly like their clients are wearing a shower curtain. Okay, so this has two sides. One side's got a little bit of a texture to it and the other side's really smooth. So I'm gonna um, fold uh, the hem in towards the smooth side so that, that that smooth side will be what is on the client's skin. It's a little more comfortable than the side with the grainy texture to it. So as you can see, I'm just folding it about a half an inch. And I'm just gonna stop and fold. I am not using pins because again, I don't wanna put as any extra holes in this. Okay, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, so we've come to a corner. I stitched to the end and I just back stitched a little ways. Um, and I'm just gonna fold it over like you'd fold a Christmas present. Oop, almost went too far. Okay. And then we're going to come around the side and just continue with that, you know, close to half inch um, hem. All right, so we finished all our hems. I've got my um, smock or cape laid out on the table. And now I'm going to use my Velcro to make the um, closure around the neck. Uh, you know, this part of the Velcro is real scratchy, so I want to make sure that this Velcro is on the outside of the cape, not the side of the cape that's going to be touching the person's skin. Um, so we're going to have a piece on the outside, and then we'll have a piece on the inside. So when you, you know, go to close it, they stick. Now there's a trick to this. As you can see, this is straight and this is curved. So we're gonna have to cut it at an angle um, and work our way around the circle and then we'll stitch it all down. This is why I recommend the sticky Velcro because um, I can just cut it and stick it into place and it'll work a lot better. I want you to see a close up of how I'm cutting these. I'm cutting these in little wedges at an angle. That way I can work my way around the side of the circle. So you're gonna end up with like little trapezoids. Okay, we've got all of our uh, hook. If you don't know, Velcro is called hook and loop. These are the hooks. These are the loops. Um, so now we're going to put the loop side on. Very important, do not forget this. Flip your cape over. If you don't do this, your enclosure is not going to work. Sorry, your closure, not your enclosure. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing with the loop side and cut at an angle, working my way around the edge 
of the neckline. I'm just going to run two stitches, two straight stitches, one down each side to hold all these pieces together. And of course, as usual, I'll back stitch at the front and the, um, and the end. And I'm just really running off the edge of my presser foot. I'd say the seam allowance is a quarter inch max. It's not really important, just so long as you get this stuck down. And this stuff is really easy to sew through. As usual, I'm using a Microtex needle and of course, isocord thread. It's the only thing I sew with. So if you're out there, isocord, sponsor me. I'm even making capes with your embroidery thread. I'm just going to do the other side and finish up. Okay, so here's our cape. If I can find the head hole. I'm super happy with this. This was really easy. I think uh, my buddy said he got these for less than $10. And, you know, this is only a few bucks of Velcro. Not even a few bucks of Velcro, you know. Um, so I'll put it on see how it fits and it's perfect it's perfect so easy you know cleanable disinfectant proof uh, it doesn't scratch my neck you know maybe a tiny bit no more than a regular cape would and I'm sure a lot of them they put the you know the paper or the towels around you um, I'm just really really pleased with this project and I'm really excited to see how clever some people are getting, finding ways to try to reopen as safely as possible, which I think hopefully most of us realize that that's the closest we can get to normal is, you know, making some clever creative changes um, so that we can all stay happy and healthy. So if you guys have any other questions, please let me know. Um, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, it's My Quilts Kick Ass. And if you'd like to contact me on Facebook, it's Mary Kenyon's Coffin Quilts. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. So we wanted to check on some of the Virginia businesses that are reopening. So we sent our Sarah Consmo to Fredericksburg. As she found out, many local businesses and their customers were looking forward to what's next. You know, second chair. Barbara Brandon Drake says it feels good yeah. to be back at work. That's right. You know, he's that's my <laughs> I feel it's as safe as it's going to be. So I think it's, I think it's a good time. Fredericksburg, <laughs> this is the new normal. There's a max of 10 people at a time. Chairs have to be spaced apart. Everyone must wear a mask and no walk-ins. Appointments have to be made in advance. I couldn't wait for it. Joseph Baker says he's here today in part because he's really needed a haircut, but also to support this small business.